Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my silver now. Welcome everyone. Today, Saturday afternoon, uh, we've got Jim and Dave on. You two are on. We're right here. And we have special guests, Bix Weir and Cliff High on. You two are on. Yes. Hey, guys. Great. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, cryptos and versus gold. Um, I guess to get started, I want to make sure all of us agree that we believe a financial crash is coming. Everybody agree? I agree to that. I couldn't. I can't tell you when. Okay. And also, uh, we all agree that we're living in a, a credit-induced bubble. My credit cards would, would uh, prove that. <laughs> Everybody, yes, I, I do agree. Do we all agree yeah. on that? <laughs> Sorry, I, I guys, I agree. sinned. I have to confess I sinned. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what we're going to do is uh, we've been told, you know, we just don't understand Bitcoin. And Correct. Let's turn this over. I don't know which Bix or Cliff want to go first or second or whatever, but... Um, I, I, I'd be happy to go first. It's, it's Cliff. Uh, Fire away. You don't mind? Yeah, go ahead. Go well, ahead. the way um, – maybe a story about how I got here. Um, I cut my teeth listening to Jim talk about gold and the, the importance of gold in a monetary system and the importance of silver. And I spent a good eight years uh, absolutely defending gold, defending silver as money, fighting the banksters as best I could with GATA, putting all my energies into that, literally, <laughs> sacrificing a lot to do it. Um, so it was a very difficult thing for me to get my head around this brand new thing called a cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. And I was told about it in the first year I heard about it. I absolutely fought that with all my might, um, just like I fought against the banks and their – unbacked fiat games and all that. To me, it was just another game that they were playing. Um, unfortunately, I didn't buy into Bitcoin when it was, you know, a dollar or two dollars. Uh, it came a little bit later, but not too much later. And what I came to understand is that Bitcoin represented, did not represent anybody's debt, just like gold and silver don't represent anybody's debt. And that was a big change from all the other fiat things I had looked at and all the electronic assets I had looked at. There was always a promise to fulfill on the other side. And when Bitcoin came around and I read the white paper and it said it's a, a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer payment system. And it was powered and managed and monitored by all the users of the system and no central banks were in the middle of it. There was no middleman. No J.P. Morgan, no uh, Steve Mnuchin. Nobody was in the middle of it, and it was, it was humanity breaking free from the system of debt and the system of control that they have over us today. And it was very similar when I ultimately understood that it was extremely similar to, similar to what gold had represented to me all these years. That's when I took more interest in it, and I really dug in deep to find out is this really secure? Is it trustworthy? Is there anything that could be hacked or cracked? Or what is the problem? Where are the problems with this system? Because it seems a little too good to be true if it is something that could take down our current banking system or even be growing up right next to it and have the ability to move over as the old system crashes the ability to move over to a new system because the gold and silver solution was going to be very difficult. Reallocating gold and silver to humanity, you know, who owns all the gold and silver? It's mainly the banksters and those people who we had trusted with our monetary system in the past. And once the current system crashes, I had this feeling in my gut that people aren't going to trust anybody anymore, but there was nowhere else to go. And that's when the cryptos came in. That's when I started listening to the Cliff, who described it very well to me so I can understand that it was humanity breaking free from the bankers 
and giving us another option besides the gold and silver option. That's, that's a, a short introduction. Cliff, what, what do you think about that? Uh, I think it's uh, extremely accurate. It's, it's one of many different ways to look at uh, the cryptocurrencies because we can look at them as um, uh, digital currencies. Every bit is um, competition to Visa, MasterCard kind of digital payments uh, or the ACH, the automated clearinghouse or the SWIFT system of the banks. It's actually competition to that. It's in competition to the remittance system that is based on the old telegraph wire approach in competition to uh, centralized authority at a bunch of different levels. It also represents a sh major shift in, in uh, computer coding paradigms from um, uh, the previous <coughs> code for the individual device to now code for a network. And it's uh, representing a level of collaboration that humans have never had before. It is also true that the uh, understanding we have of gold and silver relative to the quantities and the potential to use as a currency is erroneous. Uh, that I actually side with Bix in saying that there's more gold than people understand. And um, even if it uh, were fairly allocated, there's still yet not enough gold to be effective as a currency in the modern age unless you are attempting to some way figure out a digital transmission form for that gold, which gets you back to the issue of trust. Do you trust the people that say they're holding it for you? And since the system is crashing and since we've been lied to for so long in the uh, Western republics by the dishonest media, we now find ourselves in a situation where no one wants to trust anything that we can't afford to because we've been lied to too frequently. And so a trustless system, or rather the ability to trust the system over the individuals uh, is really the next wave for um, our, our economic order for the way that we're going to actually do business. Uh, and it was interesting that the way that the cryptocurrencies came along, that the Satoshi Nakamoto um, white paper for Bitcoin uh, figured out how to do away with the double spending issue, and then it's been growing ever since. And it will continue to grow, in my opinion, until it's large enough to suck out all the wealth that's been uh, stored in the old system. And it's really a system of uh, computers all working together to arrive at a consensus, rather software running on individual computers, the miners, is, all, is working to arrive at a consensus as to what is in our distributed digital ledger. And so in that sense, it's much safer than... Uh, centralized storage of your digital uh, digital dollars in a bank or any other scheme we've come up with uh, in the past six or eight thousand years. We know from history that gold and silver as money have failed repeatedly. It's still money, but as a currency system, it doesn't work longer than much longer in any event than historically we find paper currencies working. And paper currencies uh, had an advantage of not being heavy, more easy to to hide and keep away from bandits and easier to transmit, etc. And, and those are some of the aspects we need in our new world. So, in my opinion, the, the cryptocurrencies came along at just the right time, and now it's a question of uh, growing the software that is cryptocurrencies into something uh, robust and capable of serving uh, humanity as a whole. Absolutely articulate. I, I'm, okay. I've heard a lot of uh, people... Uh, uh, argue cryptocurrencies to me, but you, but Bixen and, and, and yourself, Cliff, I gotta say, absolutely articulate. Well, thanks much. The, I um, learned from I, you, Jim. Well, yeah, but you know, <laughs> J Jimmy might be eh, a tad, a tad of an anachronism because I'm, I'm kind of very old-fashioned. But um, there's no question that gold never functioned uh, itself as a currency. It, uh, the need for currency was real, and it made currency real, okay? And uh, that the central banks have been looking for something new to use as a, um, as a uh, reserve currency, but it's not out there. I mean, what are you going to do? Make an average of all currencies? and make That's an average of everything going down. And that's not going to serve as a reserve currency. So I've always thought, and, and you know that you know that's a fact that the that uh, the central banks will ha will have a crypto that only they can trade. And um, you know, and when you explain we've been lied to too much, 
and uh, you know the effect it has um, uh, that will become uh, more obvious once the party is over um, you make more sense of crypto gentlemen than I've heard up to this period of time in the fewest possible words. <laughs>